okay fine in last session we discussed about how to install SQL Server uh, into local computers and how to install different instances of SQL Server and a little bit about services and its properties. In this session we are going to see how to create what is database and how to create a database. If you are going to work as MSBI developer it is very very important to know about database concepts. Database plays a major role. Why? Because all the MSBI projects deals with data. If there is no data available, then there is no projects called MSBA. There is no projects on MSBA. First, let's see what is database. Database, you can call anything as database which holds data. For example, in a text pad, in a text file, if I have some data, I can call this one as database. I have a you can you can say like I have a current database on my desktop in the form of notepad and there are different forms of uh, database like you can based on how you are storing the data the most important form of uh, different databases available is RDBMS relational database management system in which you will maintain the data in the form of tables okay now RDBMS has become so popular and almost all database servers are following the same way for storing the data okay in the form in, in two dimensional one is called rows and another one is columns if you see two dimensional if you see any table a table looks like this let me take the pen here this is a table how you can store the data this is your one axis or x axis that is rows and the other one is y axis that is columns so this is how you store the data for example here employee id in the first column and here name in the second column here you will have a value one here the value will be rupesh or something some employee name in the same way here the employee id two and the name, location, or when I or something else. So if you see how the data is being stored, it is in the form of tables, uh, which is nothing but collection of rows and columns. Columns are nothing but this is a column and this is a column. There are two columns in this, and rows are nothing but this part. This is a row, this is a row, and so on. There are five rows and two columns which is forming a table to store some valid data. You can store junk data also in the databases, but people say if you store valid data, then we call it as a database. Uh, we don't call anything as a database which you have junk, right? I mean, it is of no use for us. Now, let's see how many different types of database servers are available. There are so many types of servers. SQL Server is one among them. And in the same way, Oracle, we have Teradata, MySQL, MS Access, and so on. There are so many third-party databases which they create on their own and use it for their particular, for their company. There are so many companies in India too, which operates on their own databases. They don't uh, depend on any database servers that are available in the market like SQL Server or Oracle. Here, we need to know at, at least about one database server uh, before going to MSBI concepts. So which one suits better to know? There are so many like as I told you SQL Server is there, Oracle is there, Teradata is there. But which one suits better to us? As we are going to look into MSBI concepts, MSBI is from the product, uh, from the parent called Microsoft and SQL Server is also from the parent called Microsoft. These two are like cousins. So always there will be good interaction between SQL Server and MSBI projects. Why? Because these are from the same parent. So that is the advantage of uh, learning SQL Server with MSBI. You can work on MSBI projects even um, with Oracle as back backend or Teradata as database. Let me tell you one of the experience, one of my real-time experience. I worked on a project, MSBI project, with Teradata as a backend. It was not uh, that much support you compared to SQL Server. We face so many issues and it's mainly because of how the data is stored in the Teradata databases. 
the same is not the case with SQL Server. SQL Server is also from the same parent. So whenever uh, Microsoft was designing the product, Microsoft BI, they should have kept SQL Server in mind. Why? Because it has to support its um, cousin products, right? So SQL Server is the best bet for uh, the people who are learning MSBA. Now let's see how to connect to SQL Server, where the files, what are the files will be generated whenever you create the database and little bit about SQL Server. We are going to discuss uh, about SQL Server now. In next two to three sessions, we are going to completely concentrate on SQL Server part. Okay, first let's see um, how to connect to the SQL Server to create your first database. Let me tell you one hierarchy before going there. Let me take the pen again. Let's say this is your database server. Any database server. Uh, it may be either SQL Server or Oracle, whatever it may be. This server will have so many databases. This server depends on the size of the server and capacity of the server. It can hold so many databases. And each database will have tables like this. The data will be stored in the form of tables. And these tables will have data for us. Okay. And uh, the most important thing for any database is tables. And there will be so many data, uh, so many databases in single server. Now let's see how to connect to the server. That's the first thing we're going to do. And next thing, how to create the database and then how to create the tables in the database and then how to insert the records into the database part. Okay. So for doing that, let me connect to SQL Server first. First, what I have to do? I have to connect to the database server and let me do the job. So for connecting to the SQL Server database, you need to have SQL Server Management Studio. So you can find the SQL Server Management Studio. If you open that couple of times, you will get that here. You will get that in this uh, most used list. You can see the SQL Server Management Studio. If you're not, if you're using it for first time, then you can find it under all programs in that SQL Server 2008 in that here you can find SQL Server Management Studio in short SSMS. So let me select that to connect to the database server first. Okay. Now let's see how to connect to the database engine. If you want to connect to SQL Server, you have to select server type as database engine and if you want to connect to analysis services then you have to select analysis services engine server, server type if you want to connect to reporting services this is the option and if you want to connect to integration services this is the option for us now our intention is to connect to database engine that is SQL server I'm selecting this and the next box it will talk about server name Server name is nothing but the computer name where the software is installed. At this point of time, the software is installed in my local computer and my local computer name is, you can see it here, the properties. The local computer name is morally-hp, the same is given here. And uh, the third part is authentication. I explained you in my last session, the authentication is very important to validate the user. If I provide a Windows authentication, and if I have access to this database server, then I don't need to pass any ID and password. Okay. If I select SQL Server Authentication, then I have to provide the ID and password, which I have given at the time of installing the software. So in this case, I have given SQL Server and the password I set something blah, blah, blah. I have to provide the ID and password. And if you want to remember the ID and password, you can check this option. Uh, I don't I don't remember the password to be frank let me try 
yeah, this is not correct password I have set. Um, so better I go for Windows authentication as I don't remember the password what I have set. Now I connect it to the database. This is the database server in which I have so many databases. You can see so many folders here. One is database, another one is security, server objects, replication management and so on. The first tab is what we bother about as part, uh, uh, I mean, uh, as we are database developers, not DBAs. Okay. We are just database developers. We are not database administrators. So we bother much about database folder. Now let me show you how to connect. If I have couple of instances in the same server or same computer, how to connect to the different instance. I installed two, in, I mean, I installed uh, two instances in this computer. One is default one and another one is uh, SQL dev. So in that case, I have to give the server name slash, I have to give the instance name. This is the instance name SQL dev and I have selected Windows authentication for the same and you can uh, connect to the instance in this fashion. So this is how you can create, I mean you can connect to different instances of SQL Server using the same SQL Server Management Studio. Now I connected to two instances, this is default one and this is the SQL dev one. And in this default one, you can see there are so many databases and in this new, new installation, I have not created any databases in this one yet. So there are no databases except the system databases and reporting services related stuff. Now let's work on, I'm going to disconnect it. We're going to work on SQL dev instance, which I installed today. Now let's see how to create the data. You know now how to connect to the SSMS using SSMS to any uh, SQL server. Uh, SQ, SQL server. Now let, the next step is how to create the databases. So you can create databases in many ways and let me tell you at least a couple of ways how to create the database. First and foremost thing that you have to remember when we are working on databases is database is nothing but a container which stores the data in a format called tables. Now to create a database, you just right click on the database for databases. You can see this here and select new database. Here it is asking for MS database name. I'm giving it as MSBA training is the database name and owner you can leave it as default. Here it is showing, you can see it is taking, it is creating two files by default. One is data file and another one is log file. I'm going to explain you about these two files in, in, in a couple of minutes. So you can leave the remaining options. You just provide the database name and click on OK. Now the database is created for you. Once it is created, you can see there are so many subfolders, database diagrams, don't want to create now, tables, there are no tables except system tables, even system tables are empty and views and system views, uh, there are some system views, by default it will be created and in the same way there will be some stored process and all. This tables, views, stored process, triggers and cursors, all these are objects of SQL Server. Objects means one of the way or what I call as, um, which will have some functionality. Okay. These are all the different objects of the SQL Server. First, let's worry about how to create the tables and all and then we can jump into the different objects like what is a view, what is a stored processor and so on. What is a function, what is a cursor, what is a trigger. There are so many objects which we can think of once we are familiar with the tables, the core part of the database. Before going to that, now I created a database. Okay, and the name of the database is MSBA training. It showed two files when I when I select the new database part, it, it was showing two files. One is the data file and another one is the log file. What are these two files? So data file will have all the data. 
whatever the data we are getting, we are uh, inserting into the database or we are storing in the database will be in the data file, whereas the log file will have all the transactions, whatever the logical transactions that are happening in the database. For example, inserting a record into the database is a transaction. Inserting thousands of records is thousand transactions. Everything will be logged. Everything will be logged into the log file, whereas data will be copied into the data file. And here you can see initial size of this data file is 3 MB and initial file of this uh, log file is initial size of the log file is 1 MB and here automatic growth once this 3 MB is reached we are asking the server to increase the size of the file by 1 MB and the same here by 10% that means if it is 1 MB it will be increased by 100 KB. In the same way, if the size is some 100, 100 MB or something like that, this will be 1 MB. It will be, sorry, 10 MB. It will be increased by 10% until it reaches the maximum size that is available in the drive where we install the SQL Server. I install the SQL Server in C drive. So, if you see the C drive space, there is 345 GB free and we can store the data and we can make, we can let these files increase up to 345 GB. Once it reaches the maximum size, then it will throw error saying that there is no free space to load the data into the database or to write the logs. Okay. This is about these two files. Data file will be used to store the data, whereas log file is for storing the transactions. Now, let me show you where these files will get created. <coughs> Sorry. I install SQL Server in C drive, so you have to go to C drive. Wherever you install SQL Server, if you install, if your installation is done in read drive, then you have to go to D drive. In that, go to the program files. Under program files, you can find Microsoft SQL Server folder. In that, you you can see so many different folders available. Here, you just go for first five characters: M S S Q L. That means M S S Q L. Here. MS RS that means Microsoft SQL Server reporting services. MS AS is analysis services. And we have two of each kind. If you see SQL Server, there are two. One is uh, MS SQL Server instance, another one is SQL Dev instance. Now, where I created the database? I created the database in Dev instance. So, I have to go to the SQL Server dev folder. Remember, I should not go to analysis services dev folder. This is mainly for analysis services projects and this is only for uh, reporting services projects, MSRS and this MS SQL is for SQL Server related uh, database creations and so on. If you go in, you will find MS SQL, click there under data folder, you will find these two files. That is one is uh, data file and another one is log file. You can see primary data file. This is the first one and transaction log file. And you can also see the size. The initial size of this one is 3, uh, 3 MB and the initial size of this log file is 1 MB as it is set in the database creation. So this is the location where the files will be created and this path will not remain the same. This path will be changing based on the drive where you install the SQL Server. Just keep in mind, don't blindly go for C drive, program files, Microsoft SQL Server and so on. It all depends on how you are configuring while installing the SQL Server. Now, I created the database. This is as simple as this. There are many ways to create the database. This is the way using wizard. When I right click on click on new database, the pop up is open. This one is called as wizard. So now I created the database using wizard. Okay. Now, let me show you how to create a table. Okay. We can create the table using wizard again. Go to the tables folder, click on new table and give the column name. Let's say employee ID is the first column name. 
and the data type let me give the data type as worker or I will give integer and allow nulls I will uncheck this and the next column name I am giving as employee name the data type I am giving as worker of 50 and I will allow nulls to this so or you can click on save table or you can directly close the table while closing it will ask for the name you can give it as employee that means a table with the name employee is created now you can see the table is created so this is how you can create a table using wizards but this is not the suggestible way creating the database or creating the uh, what I can call it as creating the tables with uh, wizards is not the suggestible way the best way is always to go with code coding part okay now let's see a table is created a database is created but what I'm gonna do now here is I'm gonna create a database using queries okay now we're gonna see how to create a database using queries for creating a database first you have to go to you have to click this new query part new query button which will open a query window this is called as query window where you can write the queries to access the database or to modify the database or to do anything with the database whatever you want to do with the database you have to open this query window and you have to make sure that you are pointing to master database master database is one of the system database we have four system databases one is master another one is model a third one is msdb and fourth one is tempdb each database uh, if while installing if you install a sql server instance these four databases will be created by default each database will have its specified uh, specified work they are meant for a specific work for example tempdb all the temporary stuff temporary tables temporary cache memory everything will be stored in the tempdb it, it will i mean sql server uses tempdb for storing all temporary tables and temporary things okay and msdb it is used to store um SQL Server agent jobs related information or packages related information or reporting services related information and all the stuff related to this stuff this kind and master will have all the functionality for creating the new databases and so many other stuff like creating a database level objects so every model is a sample database model database that is given by Microsoft here if you see every database is having its own uh, functionality own work defined so while creating for creating a new database you should be in master database you have to select the master database here and then you have to write your queries now let me create a query the most simplest query to create a database using SQL Server queries so what I'm gonna do here is create a new database this is what I'm gonna do I commented out this that is just for uh, uh, commenting the part to give proper meaning what I'm gonna do here I'm gonna write the query the query you can make it as simple as this create database and then you have to provide what is the name of the database okay create database database name this is the simplest query you can use to create a new database but while creating a new database you have to make sure that you are in master database let me write the query now that is the syntax how it looks and now I'm gonna write a query create database and I'm gonna give the name as MSBA this is the database name I'm gonna create now I have to execute this I don't need to execute all the three lines I need to execute only the last line so 
I am highlighting, I am selecting that particular line and you can click on this execute button, not this debug button, you have to click on this execute button. If I click on this execute button, then it will be executed in this master database and it will gather all the required stored process or whatever the objects required to create the new database and a new database will be created. You can use either execute button or simply press F5 button. You can find it in your keyboard. And one more important thing, this is not case sensitive. Okay, you don't need to worry whether it is case sensitive or not. It is not case sensitive. Let me execute it. I executed this. It is executing and it returned command successfully, completed successfully. But I am still not seeing the database here. Why? Because once the database is created using the query, you have to refresh the databases. Now you can see a database with the name MSBI is created and you can see no tables by default no table will be created and no I mean the same system use will be created by default and it will remain the same as the one which we created using wizard with the help of wizards. This is as simple as this creating the database with the query. You can make it so complex by providing the file names, file growth and so on but that is not required at this point of time. We are going to see how to create the databases with complex queries in future classes. So this is done, creating the database. Now let's go to the next thing that is creating the table. Table is not only collection of rows and columns, you have to keep one more thing in mind that is data types. Okay, let me explain you what is data types. For that I am taking an Excel. Excel is not installed I guess in this machine. Let me check. Okay fine, uh, that is not a problem. So what is a data type? Data type will make sure that every column in the table will have same data, same kind of data. For example, let's say this is my table with two columns and five rows. Okay. What data type will make sure is data type will make sure that the complete data in this column, if you see from top to bottom, all the data that is present in the column will have same type of data, either integer or string or date type or something floating type and so on. There are so many data types available which we will uh, see in future sessions, but keep in mind that data types will make sure that it will provide a con it will it will provide a condition check before inserting the data into the table for example if i define this column as integer okay and if i define this column as a string after defining it so if i try to insert a string value into this particular cell it will throw error saying string value will not be accepted why because it is defined as integer in the same way it will make sure for the complete column in any row of this column you cannot provide any type of data apart from the data type whatever we define in the same way for the second column so data types will make sure that the type of data will remain the same throughout the column that is also what we provided okay now Let's see how to create the table using queries. So for that, I'm first let me write the syntax, the basics in simplest form, create table
table name you have to open the brackets in between the brackets you have to specify what are all the columns let's say column 1 space what is the data type of it once you provide this then go to column 2 name and data type of it column 3 name and data type of it and so on the number of columns you want to provide for example if you want to provide 100 columns you can do the same till the end so this is the syntax if you see the syntax is as simple as uh, creating the database except the part of adding the columns create table and provide the table name in brackets you have to specify the columns list so I, if my intention is to have only three columns then these three columns information is enough you have to provide the column name what is the column name with which you want to call and what is the type of data you are gonna provide or you are gonna store in that particular uh, data table column now let's see creating a table create table uh, I'm gonna give the name employee employee is the table name and here I'm giving the column names employee ID is the first column it won't allow space that's why I've given underscore and what is the type of data I'm going to store in this particular column? I'm going to give integer values. So I specified int. Next column is employee underscore name. This is varchar of 100. So varchar is nothing but string type of data. It will store strings. R O O P E S H is a string. Okay. It stores strings and the size of the string can vary between 0 to 100 so if I specify it as 100 it can vary it can go up to 100 characters R is one character O is one character another O is one character if you see root page it has seven characters like that you can go up to 50, 100 characters if you specify it as 50 it will allow only till 50 characters and the third one is employee city and again I'm here I'm defining it as care of 15 so there is a slight difference between care and worker worker you can have a variable length like for example if you you have given the length as 50 and if you pass rupesh as the name as the value into this particular column it will take only seven characters that are required and it will take only seven bytes of data whereas this care even though if you pass 15 characters or less than that it will block that 15 characters of size it will take that 15 bytes of data to store the information this takes more space I mean even though the character is you know, fully uh, there or not for example um, where car is 50 if I pass Rupesh to the second column employee name it will take only seven characters seven bytes of data it, it will take so it occupies only the memory that is required to store the seven characters of data if I pass bang as city name employee city as the character is defined as 15 uh, character length is defined as 15 even though it is four characters it will take 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 15 character size information it will be like this from bang and then space so it occupies unnecessary space so better go with worker data type and I prefer to go with worker data type so for example purpose I have explained this now I have defined worker and I have defined all the three columns that I am interested in now if I select this particular cell create from query and if I execute this a database table is created but before executing any query make sure that you are in right database now if I execute this query the table will be created in master database this is not our requirement our requirement is to create the table in the newly created database that is MSBI so what you have to do is you have to select this and select the 
MSBI database. Now, if I execute this, a table will be created in the MSBI database. Now, I executed it. It is saying command completed successfully. So, let me refresh and see whether the table is created or not. I have to click on refresh. You can see a table is created with the column with the table name employee and you can see the three columns which have defined employee ID, employee name and employee city. We will discuss about the remaining things in next sessions. So this is how you can create the table. Okay. Now we have done uh, our part what we have, um, in creating the tables and creating the database. What is the final step we have to um, see that is loading the data or storing the data in the database tables. Now let me show you how to insert the data into these particular tables. I am going to write insert queries now. This is what I am going to do and first I am going to write the syntax. So syntax is insert into table name in bracket columns list space uh, let me go for a simple syntax rather than making it as a complex one. Insert into table name values. What are all the values you want to pass? Okay. This is how you can insert the data into a table. If you see here, the syntax is very simple. Insert into table name. I am trying to insert the data into particular table name. Values. What are the values? Now let me make it as a query to insert the data into the employee table. So insert into what is the table name? Table name is employee and then I have to specify what are all the values I am going to pass into this employee table. So what is the first column? First column is employee ID and I have defined it as integer. So one is the employee ID. I am giving some random numbers. You can pick whatever the employee ID you want. But it should be integer as you define the column as integer here. And the next thing is name that is where care. In other words, it is a string kind of data. All string kind of data and date types of data should be in single quotes. So I am giving in single quotes the value Rupesh space Babu as the employee name. Now the third one is city and again it is worker that is string kind of data you have to specify it in single quotes I am giving it as Bangalore. So that's it an insert query is ready. So let me select this part insert into employee a values and specify the values in the brackets. If I execute this one row affected that means one row is inserted into the table. Okay. Now, how to read the data? Before reading the data, let me insert couple of records. So I'm copying and pasting the same. This time I'm giving employee ID 2. I'm giving a different name and I'm giving uh, the city as Hyderabad. Okay. Now again I'm executing and one row affected. That means how many rows are present in the table now? We have two rows inserted into the table. One is the row that belongs to Rupesh Babu and the second row is that row that belong, that has data about Lokesh Babu. Now let me show you how to how to select the table data, data from a table. So the syntax for selecting a table data is select star from table name here star means nothing star means select all the columns so how many columns are there there are three columns one is employee ID, employee name and employee city if you want all the columns you have to use select or 
if you want only couple of columns then you have to select you, you have to type the column names if you want to get if you want to retrieve only employee id and employee name oh sorry let me write the syntax first column 1 comma column 2 and so on from table name so this is how you can select the data uh, either full result set or the selected columns now let's let's try both here first i am checking with the star value select star from employee this should fetch all the columns information and all the rows information you can see the result set is this this is called result window in that you can, it is retrieving employee id employee name and employee city and you can see all the records that we inserted into the table now let me go with the second option by specifying the column names employee id comma employee name from employee is the table name here i am in the second case i am trying to uh, pull only two columns information if i click on f5 you can see the first query resulted the full table all the three columns and all the two rows that are present and the second query resulted in only two columns one is employee id and another one is employee name which we requested for so this is how you can select and you can select all the columns in the select list too it is not uh, mandatory that you have to go for star when you are selecting all the columns so in this way you can select all the column names in the select list from table name so this is equal to uh, select star from employee apart from performance problem there is some performance if you use star and the performance i heard as per the documents I have read select column names from employee is faster than select star from employee okay this is how you can select now let's go back to insert part I'm going back to insert here I want to show you a couple of things so let me copy this and make use of it the same here I'm trying to insert one more record into the same table with the employee ID 3 and name is Vinay Kumar and I don't know city of this guy. I don't know to which city he belongs to. This information is not provided to me. In this case, if I execute in the same way, This, is, this will throw some error. Let me show you what error it is going to throw. So it is throwing an error saying that column name or number of supplied values does not match. Table does not match the table definition. That means this table has three columns defined and you are passing values for only two columns. So which two you want me to take? You have not specified it. So if you don't have values for all the columns, in this case, you have to write the query in this fashion. If you don't have values for all the columns, you can do like this. You can specify, one way is to specify null for the unknown columns. If you don't know the value of the column, uh, then you can pass null. That means it will be inserted with the null value for the employee city of the uh, employee Vinay Kumar. But this is not suggestible. The best way if you don't know the value is to provide the column names for which you are passing the value. Here you are passing two values. You have to specify what are all those two columns for which you are passing the values. One is employee ID. And another one is employee name and the name the ID is 4 and the name is Venki Kumar so now I'm passing only two values 
for two columns and I'm specifying those two columns. What are those two columns? And by default, the third one will be taken as null. Now, let me go back to select again. I'm selecting all the columns. Select star from employee table. If you see, the third record I inserted by passing null. And this has taken null. And if I don't specify anything also, it will take null. But it is always better to go with the column names if you don't know the, if you are not provided with the value of any particular column that is available in the table. So this is how you can insert the data. In real time, you may need to load the data from the same table to the same table. For example, this is the employee table. You may need to load the same data that is available in employee table to the same table again. Uh, let me show you that. This is a useful query. Uh, that's why I'm explaining you. If you see, I have uh, four records. I want to duplicate the same data and make it as one lakh records. Okay, what I have to do? Uh, that means I have to run these queries something around 25 to 30 times or 50 times. I don't know how many times it will make it uh, to one lakh records. If I want to duplicate the data, if I want to copy the same data again and again, what you can do is you can write an insert statement, insert into table name and immediately instead of providing the values if you write a select statement select star from same table name it is it may not be same it may be different also uh, it is not mandatory that it should be the same table name so the, this syntax meaning is insert into a particular table by selecting the data from this table let me show you an example insert into employee table by selecting the data from employee table okay I'm selecting the data from employee and inserting the data to the same employee if I execute this you can see four rows affected that means already existing four rows got copied into the same table again if I execute it now it is saying eight rows affected now how many records will be there in total? There will be 16 records in total and if I execute it, 16 records affected. That means 16 new records got inserted into the table which will form uh, a count of 32 records in total. Now if I select, select star from employee, you can see a total of 32 records. Most of the records are duplicated as we copied the data from the same table to the same table. So this is very useful one whenever you are working on uh, moving the data from one server to another server or one table to another table. You will come to know when the sessions pro when the session progresses. To show you a better example, I will create a new table. Create table. I am giving simply EMP name name as EMP and I am giving ID as integer comma name as worker of 50. Now I am creating a table with the name employee and sorry EMP it is created and this is the data you can see that is present in the EM employee and EMP. Let me show you both before going further. So if you see this table is full with 32 records and uh, sorry this table has 32 records and this table has no information. Now my intention is to move this employee IDs and this employee name data these 32 rows data into this table. In that case what I have to make sure is I have to make sure whether the columns that are present in this table and the columns that are present in this, I mean, that I'm going to pull from this table are having same data type or not. 
for example insert into emp table this is the newly created table okay i'm trying to insert the data into this select star from employee if i execute this query what is going to happen is it is going to throw error why because the number of columns here in the employee emp table and employee table are not matching this select statement will return three columns whereas this insert table statement is having only two columns if you see that column names are not matching so what i have to do to fix this so i have to specify what are all the columns that i am going to pull from here to there i'm going to pull employee id is the one column and then employee name is the other one so if i execute this it is saying 32 rows are affected that means 32 rows inserted why because now the columns that are defined in this emp table is same as the select output i'm getting only two columns and those two columns will be copied into emp table here one thing you have to keep in mind is the order should be proper that means in this emp table we have id and name id is integer and name is varchar type right now what i'm going to do here is i'm going to give employee name first and then employee id So if I try to execute this, it will say the conversion failed. Why? Because this is an integer column. It will be. It will try to insert into. Sorry, this is a string column. It will. It will uh, try to insert into employee ID column, which is integer in the EMP table. So the conversion fails here. That's why it will not execute. You have to make sure the order of the columns here in the EMP table to which we are inserting and the second table order column columns order should match the first column is integer if if the first column here is integer then the first column here should be integer here the second column is string then here the second column is should be string so that is one condition you have to keep in mind whenever you are copying bulk data like this now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to remove employee name and uh, instead of that I'm going to keep employee city. What's going to happen? Is it going to be fail? I mean, is it going to fail or it is going to be executed successfully? Even though the columns I defined in the EMP table is employee ID and employee name and here I'm pulling employee ID and employee city, it will be executed successfully. Why? Because it won't look for what data you are trying to push whether you are pushing city name or you are pushing employee name or you are pushing designation whatever it may be what it will look for is it will look for only data types whether this employee city data type is having matching mapping data to the second column of this emp table emp table second column is varchar of 50 fine and i am passing only character string data from the employee city so it works fine now if you see select star from EMP the first insert is inserted all the IDs and names the second insert after 32 you can see it is inserted the city names so this is one thing you have to keep in mind while inserting the data from one table to another table you have to make sure the columns are in proper order and the data types of the first column in the inserting table and the first column in the select table should be matched and all the order of the I mean data types of uh, all the columns should be map matched and the third one is you have to make sure that you are pro uh, passing proper data in here you are passing wrong data still it is taking why because the data type is same so you sh this mistake should not happen now let me show you one example very important one to keep in mind how the log file and the data file grows what are the data file and log file it is nothing but this this is the data file and this is the log file for every transaction you are making here okay insert into employee 
I am selecting the data from the same table. Select star from employee. Let me take this employee rather than taking the EMP. EMP is having only two columns. Let me go with this. So what I am doing here is I just doing a select statement from an employee and inserting the same data into the same table. Now 32 rows affected. That means I have 64 rows in total. Now we have to keep an eye here, see the size, how it grows. This is the database where we are, these are the database files in which we are copying the data, MSBI. The size here is 2304KB for the data file and 576KB for the log file. The log file will grow faster whenever you try to insert or update or whenever the transactions are huge, like if you are inserting some millions of records or if you are deleting some millions of records, the log file grows like anything. Let me show you an example. Keep in mind this 2304KB for data file and 576KB for uh, log file. Let me execute it a couple of times which will make it uh, to capture so many logs, log, so many transactions. Now I am executing it again and again and again. And you can also observe when the number of rows that are inserting is increasing, it the time is also getting increased. Earlier it was taking fraction of seconds to insert the data. Now you can see it has taken one second. At the bottom where my mouse is pointing, it has taken one second to load this information. Now it has taken two seconds to load 65,536 records. And if you see here, the log file is already has become 24 MB, whereas the data file is still 6 MB. So the log file grows faster whenever the transactions are huge, whenever you are inserting huge data. In real time people will load some crores of data over and overnight. So in that case the log file grows like anything. Let me insert a couple of records, I mean let me execute the same query a couple of times and show you how the log file grows. So now it has taken 7 seconds to load to insert 2,62,144 records. Now it will be 4 lakh something and let's see how much time it is going to load. It has taken 8 seconds to load this information. And if you see the log file it already has become 184 MB whereas this data file is still 37 MB. Now try to select the data from the table. and see how many records are there and how much time it is going to take to retrieve the data. It has taken something around 7 seconds. The total number of records that are present in this table at this point of time is 10,48,576 and you can see the size is at 184 MB. So. This is how you can create a database using queries, how you can create a table and how you can insert the data into a table, how you can select the data from a table, or how you can select all the records or couple of or all the columns or couple of columns, whatever the columns of your wish, and how to insert the data from one table to how to move the data from one table to another table and what uh, constraints you have to keep in mind or what validation points you have to keep in mind while moving the data from one table to another table. Now we are going to see how to update the data. What we have done till now is we have created the table and we inserted the records. Now how to update the data? Let's see that part. Okay. Uh, for doing the same, Mm, let me take this uh, employee table and see what data we have. EMP table, not employee table. I have uh, employee ID and Rupesh Babu, the name. Now I want to update the name of Rupesh Babu. Actually, the name, the spelling is not R double O P E S H. It is R U P E S H. So wherever you find Rupesh Babu, you can you if you want to update then. Uh, this is the syntax. 
update table name set column name is equal to new value what is the new value you want to pass okay so let me make it as a query update emp set name is equal to r u p e s h babu so what it will do is it will update the name column with this rupesh babu it won't leave even lokesh venay and venki it will update everything why because i am not restricting any condition i am simply telling the server update employee table emp table and set the name value as rupesh babu if you want to restrict it if you want to restrict so that uh, it has to update only uh, the names of the employees where the name is rupesh babu then we have to use where condition where is a keyword which will set some condition we can specify the condition like where name is equal to rupesh babu okay we are going to discuss more about where condition in tomorrow's class uh, here i'm going i am just using a where condition to restrict the update part to be applied only on some restricted records if i execute this you can see eight rows impacted and if i execute the select statement and see the data of our employee table you can see only rupesh babu is changed to rupesh babu r u p e s h babu this is how you can on um, update if you want to update more than one column then give comma and give the next column name and new value one second this is all and so on if you want more you can specify as many updates based on the number of columns you have you are uh, having in the table so let me apply the second case here shift to home and copying this part here i am updating it to rupesh babu where the name is rupesh babu and also i am updating the id so i have taken i have given comma id is equal to let's say uh currently it is 1 i am going to change it to uh 5 so i am asking the server to update the name to rupesh babu wherever the name is r u p e s h space babu and also id to 5 let me execute this and now it was uh, it was affected you can see the name is changed to rupesh babu and id is changed to 5 so this is how you can update more than one columns and this is how using where condition you can restrict the data so in next session we are going to discuss a lot about where condition fully about where condition what are the different possibilities what are the different conditions we can give in where condition and people may ask how can i update a record without having where condition if you do if you do that that means without having where condition if you try to update the data okay now what's going to happen here is all the 64 records are updated now if you go and see this table it has all updated to 5 and name is updated to rupesh babu so you have to be you have to be very very careful whenever you are writing update statements if you don't write the proper where condition all the data will get updated it may lead to so many problems personally what i do whenever i am writing update statements is first i will write update table name and then i will write the where condition what is the what is the filter part that i am going to apply to this update statement i will write the where condition to be on safe side if i set the where condition properly first 
then even by mistake if I execute the query, it is not going to update all the records, it is going to update the records that I am interested in updating. So this is how you can update the data in a table. Now, this is most frequent thing, taking backup of a table. Whenever you are working in a project and uh, if you, you got an issue saying that the data in a particular table is wrong, then the first thing you have to do is you have to take the backup. What are all the different ways you can take the backup using queries? First way, for example, my intention is to take the backup of, not this one, employee table, E-M-P-L-O-Y-E-E table. So for that, what I have to do? The first thing I have to do is I have to create a table with the same structure. Create table, employee underscore backup. I'm giving it as in some backup name. And here I have to specify the same similar column names. Employee ID integer. And then employee name worker of 50. And the third one is employee city. This is worker of uh, 15. Okay. I've created a new table. Uh, and the name of the table is employee backup. So here what I'm going to do is insert into this backup table, select star from main table. So this is as simple as this. You, you created the structure. Now you are inserting the data into the employee backup table by selecting the data from employee table. And it is going to take a couple of I mean, uh, like 15 seconds something around 15 seconds to load all the 10 lakh records. Now if you see all the data is moved to this table and if you refresh it you can see the backup table. So this is your backup table. You can make the changes to this table whatever you want to do like updates and all and if you feel the updates what you have done is wrong then you can revert this data. You can copy the data from here to here. So to be on safe side generally people will create backups. Now there is one another beautiful way of creating the backups that is select star into what is the new table name uh, let's say employee underscore backup is the new table name from employee so this is uh, this looks like hybrid of insert statement and select statement if you exclude this part this is the if you exclude this part it it is a select statement select star from employee and if if you exclude the remaining part if you select only the highlighted part it is an insert into table name so it is a hybrid of select statement and the insert statement the meaning of this statement is select the data from this table okay and create a table with this name and the structure of this and then insert the data into the backup so it has three steps involved. First, select data from table. Sorry. Select data from table. Next step is create a table with the given name and structure of selected table okay third one insert data into newly created table by pulling data from um, selected table okay it has three steps in this simple select statement select star means select get any everything into employee underscore backup table from employee. So take the structure and data from employee and create a table called employee underscore backup with the same structure as uh, employee and insert the data. Now if you see I come I write it in commented code you can see 10 lakhs 48,576 records 
impacted and let me let us double check select star from EMP underscore backup let me execute this you can see the structure is similar to the employee table and the data is also inserted and all the records you can see 10 lakhs 48,576 records are copied into the newly created table by creating the structure and you can see after refreshing here you can see the newly created backup table so this is the easiest way instead of, instead of creating the table and then write, uh, writing the select statement part the best way is to use this statement the select star into the ta backup table name I mean new table name from uh, the table where we have data so this is how you can take the backup this is the one of the best way to take the backup and this is about the starting I mean basics uh, what we call it, uh, starting sessions on uh, SQL server and we are gonna see we're gonna cover a lot in coming sessions thanks